Okay, uh, now I want to use several slides to give you a very general introduction to what you're going to learn in this class in spatial data analysis. Okay, um, so what is spatial data analysis? So broadly speaking, uh, spatial data analysis includes an entire range of techniques and methods used by geographers. Okay, and uh, usually when we are using different uh, study methods to address geographic uh, issues, uh, there are two groups of methods or approaches. Uh, one group is called qualitative approaches. Okay, another one is called quantitative approaches. So qualitative approaches, they focus on the description and explanation of, um, of, of, of the phenomenon, of a phenomenon. On the other hand, quantitative approaches, they tend to use um, mathematics, statistics, uh, they use figures, they use data, okay, to, um, again, you can say describe, but they use um, figures, data, and maybe tables to address phenomena, okay? And this course, this course, uh, Introductory Spatial Data Analysis, focuses on quantitative approaches. So we're going to learn um, fundamentals of statistics. And we're going to also going to learn how to um, use this widely applied statistical methods to address geographic problems. Okay, because like I mentioned before uh, in the last video, statistics is something not exclusive to geography. Okay, if you learn chemistry, you learn biology. Um, I mean, any discipline that employs quantitative methods would use statistics as a tool. Okay, it's a tool of, um, of um, quantitative tool. Statistics can be considered as a quantitative tool. So uh, this course, this course, because we're geographers, you will be geographers, um, and uh, um, or, or or use um, geographic knowledge to work in future. So you will learn how to use statistics to serve um, to address geographic uh, problems issues. So statistics. The methodology of collecting, classification, presentation, and analysis of numerical data. And statistics can be spatial or non-spatial. It depends on your context, research context. Like I mentioned, if you're working, um, you, if you're a student, if you're a student in biology, you will use statistics. But if that was the case, you did not have a spatial context. But in geographer, you are you are a student uh, majoring GIS or simply geography. A geography is about space. Okay, is about all those entities with spatial with a spatial context, which means um, no matter the the research object. Uh, I mean, as long as it's geography, that ob it's about geography, that object has a position or has a location uh, within a specific space. So when we're talking about statistics in geography, there is a spatial context, okay? So in other words, we're going to learn statistics with a spatial context here in this class, in this course, okay? so. What is quantitative geography? So uh, it's about analysis of numerical spatial data, uh, the development of spatial uh, theory, uh, construction and testing of mathematical models of spatial processes, and spatial uh, and spatial considerations of geographic data. Um, 
actually quantitative geography is not something very new. Okay, uh, quantitative geography is something raised uh, in the middle of uh, 1960s and 1970s after or say during something called quantitative revolution of geography. You may know that, you may, you may not know that. If you did not know that, I suggest just Google quantitative revolution of geography as a student majoring uh, uh, GIS or major in uh, geography. You should know that, okay? Quantitative um, revolution of geography because it actually saved geography as a science, as a discipline. Geography had huge problem of identity after the Second World War, okay? So yeah, this course is not about um, general geographic masters. So I'm not going to detail that, but um, if you did not know that history, just Google, okay? Quantitative revolution of geography. It's interesting. I guarantee you, if you didn't know that, search that, it's interesting. And as a geographer, a student majoring in GIS or, or geography, you should know that, okay? So quantitative geography and statistics, that's what we care in this class. So um, the quantitative geography includes exploratory analysis and confirmative analysis. And if you combine these different types of methods, uh, uh, say analysis uh, with, with, with statistics, we have summary and description statistics. For example, if you want to explore the central tendency of, of a data set, usually you use uh, average value, in other words, mean, or you can use median value. You can also use range, okay? The difference between max and mean values of your data set, okay? Those uh, statistics, or statistical variables, they are for summary and description. They are used to explore your data set, okay? Uh, in order to explore your data set, you can also do investigating, uh, in, uh, do uh, relationship investing, investigating and uh, uh, try to find out the spatial patterns of phenomena within space, or you can suggest hypothesis Okay, for example, you are interested in um, the average temperature of a tropical city. Okay, so you collected the, uh, the daily temperature of that city for a whole year and you got an average value of say 22 Celsius degree. Okay, now you want to, you may want to establish a hypothesis that uh, this 22 Celsius degree has no significant statistical difference from 24 Celsius degree, okay? So this is called hypothesis testing, okay? Okay, so this is something we're going to learn in this class. And for confirmative analysis, hypothesis testing, again, suggesting hypothesis is exploration. And uh, what's the purpose of hypothesis testing? Is to its purpose is to confirm something. For example, if, if the city's annual average temperature is significantly statistically different from 24 or 22 Celsius degree, you want to confirm that, okay? Model specification. Okay, for example, you want to establish an empirical model between, uh, say, population and the average temperature of a city. You may have heard the, the term urban heat island. It means that um, urban areas, they tend to have higher temperatures compared to surrounding rural areas. And what is an indicator of of big city population. So usually um, there is a hypothesis 
that uh, the higher the population, the higher the temperature of a city. So in order to establish, to confirm this relationship between population and uh, 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 average temperature or say uh, summer temperature of a city, you want to establish uh, an empirical model, okay? During this process, during this uh, uh, process of establishing this statistical or empirical relationship, um, you want to adjust the model, okay? So that's another example of confirmative analysis, model specification. Okay, so here, here, I, I just want to use a, a, a commonly um, known example or case study to, to show you the whole process of scientific research and say, what's the relationship between this scientific research process and what we're going to learn in this class, okay? Urban heat island. So here you can consider this figure as, as a profile of a city temperature. So in the middle, we have downtown, right, of a city. Then uh, if you drive away from the downtown, we have suburban areas, right? Say, uh, say industrial area. Uh, I consider that as a part of city. Then we have suburban residential. Um, it's, it's somewhere between countryside or rural areas and urbanized areas, right? And uh, this is a spatial, actual spatial distribution of different land covers of a city and its surrounding areas, right? And when we're talking about temperature, no matter uh, in Fahrenheit or Celsius degree, we can say this curve here shows the temperature of different locations within this large region. You can see that in downtown area, the temperature is the highest. When you're driving away from downtown area, let me, okay, here's it. When you're dri driving away from the downtown area, okay, to rural area, you can see the temperature drops continu continuously, right? So this is called urban heat island because uh, this urbanized area is just like an island of heat surrounded by cooler areas, okay? So in order to address urban heat island, what statistical methods will you use? And uh, uh, how do you establish a whole scientific process to scientifically address urban heat island? Here is the process you want, most people would follow, okay? So firstly, concepts. We have urban heat island, that's one concept. We have also the concept of temperature. Temperature, no matter in Celsius degree or Fahrenheit, they are indicators of temperature, right? So we connect, we connect temperature with urban heat island, this concept, right? These two concepts, they're connected. They're connected with each other. How to describe that? How to describe that? We use descriptive statistics and the sampling and estimation. For example, uh, what's the average temperature of downtown for a specific year? What's the average temperature of uh, suburban areas of the same year? What's the average temperature of surrounding rural areas in that specific year? Those average values from different um, locations, they are descriptive statistics. Average values, mean values, they are descriptive statistics. So we can use it to describe the general or use them to, 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 to address the general temperature because average temperature is, you can consider that as the general temperature of the area, right? And uh, during this process, when you're trying to collect temperature data, how to find different locations to carry out the test of temperature. That's called sampling. That's called sampling. That's called sampling. And uh, um, say, uh, I would just choose 10 sampling locations in downtown area. 
we test, we collect the temperature uh, among these 10 locations, right? And we calculate the average value of these 10 sampling locations. And we consider that average value of a day is, is the representation of the temperature of urban area on that day. That's called sampling, right? But how to find all those sampling locations? randomly or use different specific methods, stratified sampling, okay? That's sampling. Estimation, estimation. Estimation is about using samples to address the whole population. For example, you want to, um, you want to survey the average commuting time of young people in a specific city. Say there is maybe 20,000 young people in that small city. Okay, you cannot just survey all of them. Again, you need to sample some of them to do your survey. But can you say that your samples are representative enough to represent the whole population of young people in that city? You are not sure. Actually, if you have an average value for commuting time for your samples, that average value is not equal to the average commuting time of the whole young population, that's for sure. But you can always have something called confidence Right? I know that this average value is only from a small portion of the population because I just don't have the time and money to survey the whole population. It's not practical. And so the average value is not equal to the accurate average value of the whole population. But I can give you a confidence level. Say I'm 95 or 90% 90 confident that this average value from samples can be used or I can can be used to address the whole population or based on this 95% or 90% confidence level I can establish a range and I can see that 95 95% uh, 95 confident that the average commuting time value of the whole population is within this confidence interval. That's called estimation, okay? We're going to learn how to do estimation in this class. So description. So next, uh, when you observe uh, your results from uh, descriptive statistics, from your sampling methods, from your estimation, you may have some hypothesis in your, on your mind Okay, but how to verify, how to test this hypothesis you have? You can use hypothesis testing, okay? Uh, like I mentioned before, um, the average, um, according to your survey, the average temperature of uh, the downtown area of the city is 22 Celsius degree for the whole year. Okay, um, you want to say if there is a, a significant or, or a difference of the average value from a hypothesized value. You can do hypothesis testing, okay? Hypothesis testing. And if uh, there are multiple data groups and you want to test if average values or mean values of these multiple data groups are significantly different from each other, you can use something called ANOVA or full name analysis of variance to do that, okay? And again, if you want to test if there is statistical relationship between two variables, for example, I mentioned uh, the population of a city and the average temperature of a city, okay? You doubt if there is this statistical relationship. Of course, you can do correlation analysis and say if there is strong, weak, or no linear or nonlinear correlation between two variables. Hypothesis means something you are not sure 
or in other words, hypothesis is 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 educational guess. You want to you want to confirm if your educational guess is correct. So you do hypothesis testing, you do analysis of variance, you do correlation analysis. Okay, and usually after that, especially when you are trying to explore the correlation between or among variables, eventually you will have a model. A model can be considered in this specific class, a model is a formula. Y is equal to A multiply X plus B. That is a model. That's, that's, uh, that's usually the form of, uh, of, the, of the model when you are trying to explore the linear correlation between X and Y, okay? Because it's linear, so this formula is linear. Y is equal to A multiply X plus B. A and B, they are coefficients, right? B is usually considered as bias or intercept. A is slope, right? Okay, next, right? You can use regression to get a model, right? Uh, and the spatial pattern analysis can also lead to a model or models. Spatial modeling um, <laughs> is called modeling. So results must be models, right? For example, GWR, geographic weighted regression. It's not a simple regression. It's a, it's a type of regression with spatial context, right? Which means that um, in GWR, um, <clears throat> uh, locations matter, locations matter. And after establishing models, uh, you can form a law or uh, say, and based on laws, you could just form theories. And sometimes, sometimes, mm, I would say yearly, not sometimes, yearly, this whole process from model to loss to theory or uh, directly from model to theory, this process is not linear. It is actually a loop, or sometimes we call it uh, an iteration process or iterative process. You have a model, you have some loss, you get a theory, and then when you apply this theory to, to, to real world, you find out that, okay, this theory is not that working well. So you get back, you get back from theory to models again. You try to find, uh, you found the problem of the theory and then you try to improve your models. And then you, you use this improved models to get even in a better theories or, or improved theories. And you repeat this process, right? Iteration, iteration. Okay, so let me clean that all those um, notes, uh, eraser. Uh, so this figure here I'm showing you has two parts, okay? The first part is this general um, process for scientific research from concepts to description, to hypothesis, to model, to laws, to theory, that's the first part of this what? Of, uh, of this uh, of a, a commonly known scientific process from concepts to theory, eventually theory. And the second part of this figure is what you can learn from this class, okay? They're in purple blocks, right? You will learn descriptive statistics. You will learn estimation. You will learn hypothesis testing. You will learn ANOVA, correlation, regression, uh, spatial pattern analysis and spatial modeling. Not so much in this class because it's introductory spatial analysis, but they are also about spatial data analysis. So I have listed all those items or methods you're going to learn in this class or even beyond this class. And these statistical methods, you can say they are attached to different stages of, uh, of a scientific research process, okay? So at the, and by the end of the semester, when you look back, 
at this specific uh, case study, urban heat island, say, don't make it too complex. Say, um, average temperature sampling and uh, um, um, organizing this, this uh, temperature data sets, you'll see that, okay, you can, you can just use these methods you have learned uh, from this course to scientifically, statistically address temperature data sets or other data sets, elevation, temperature, uh, any variable, okay? Okay, so yeah, this is, this is um, something I want to introduce um, about what you're going to learn in this class. Okay, and this is the end of first lecture, which is again, introduction. Okay, and uh, next week, I will start talking about um, geographic data. Okay, there are different types of, types of them because this class is about geographic data sets. Okay, statistical methods for, for, for geographic data sets. Uh, I think it's necessary to introduce, to give you a little bit introduction to um, geographic data. Some concepts you may have learned them from other classes, uh, but just consider it as a review. And also um, I want to introduce some basic mathematical notations, okay? Because we're going to learn uh, a lot of them. We're going to use a lot of them in, in this class. So I think um, it's convenient to just establish some baseline and um, yeah, um, because your students in geography department, uh, some of you may have may have not been mm, touching with mathematics for a long time. So I think, yeah, uh, it can also be a review of mathematical uh, notations, okay? That will be uh, next week's um, content, okay? Okay, uh, yeah, that's it, thank you.